Ross Chastain's 2021 season was more like a trailer to a highly anticipated movie. An introduction to the watermelon farmer turned racer. Dramatized to a lot less of an extent than another swamp dweller. What are you doing in my swamp? It was just a teaser, it was just a preview to get familiar to the movie. The high quality big cinema production known as Ross Chastain's 2022 season. NRF Productions proudly presents video 2 of the full tank postseason. 180 in NASCAR performance, Ross Chastain 2021 to 2022. The unique thing about the NASCAR Cup Series is this. You have a group of men with different experiences and different upbringings bound together by one thing, one common tie, and that is the fact that they are gifted with the seven-figure talent, probably a lot less due to most of the big sponsors leaving. Nonetheless, it's talent of driving a stock car professionally. Though, when you look at all the NASCAR drivers today, the predominant paths are either you have a rich parent that climbed up the corporate ladder, you have someone working inside an organization to get you ties to a cup team, or you are just destined to be a racer biologically. You have a long lineage of racers in your heritage. For Ross Chastain, what possibly could the swamps of Alva, Florida offer him compared to these other drivers? Well, it did offer him a lot of these. Look at that watermelon. 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 The seventh generation watermelon farmer learned early the value of hard work, getting up early, working out in the heat in 90, 100 degree days. The blue collar lifestyle would be the one thing that he applied to his early NASCAR career. Nobody wanted to drive the Johnny Davis cars, but with his blue collar nature, Chastain saw that as opportunity. Eventually, this taken opportunity, even when it's hard mentality, worked his way into some bigger opportunities. But still, for the most part, he was kept out of competitive equipment because he did not have funding. And when he did get the money to race competitively, that turned out to be a Ponzi scheme. In fact, we at NRF Productions obtained exclusive footage of Jeff Karpoff to the DC Solar employees on that fateful day. I declare bankruptcy! So Chip Ganassi Racing had to seize his Xfinity opportunity that he was set to have in 2019. Fortunately for him, Kyle Larson's wife told him after Easter dinner 2020, Hun, I'll do the dishes tonight and put the kids to bed. You go have yourself some fun before the real fun begins. Bored from all the dirt tracks being shut down, Kyle Larson would hop onto iRacing, having himself a teenage gamer moment that would change NASCAR forever. I can see it. You can't hear me? Hey, Nick. Chip Ganassi was forced to Donald Trump it to the demon on wheels. You're fired. Kyle Larson was canceled for now since Credit One Bank, McDonald's, and Clover didn't want to be accused of being Klansmen, being a part of the racist Southern South lynching and hanging black people. They did not want to be associated with that. Replaced by an aging, family-friendly Matt Kenseth who was mostly brought in for corporate damage control because let's be honest, he was pretty washed up in his 2020 season. Chip Ganassi is a man that likes winners. That's why he got Matt Kenseth, even though he was like Prairie Farms milk in that season. And it's why Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, and Jamie McMurray, they raced for his teams in NASCAR, as well as IndyCar for so long, won him Indy 500s, Daytona 500s, and many races far in between. Car number 42 was lacking that compared to Kurt Busch in car number one. A few years later than everyone expected, thanks to Jeff Karpoff, Ross Chastain would get to drive the 42 for Chip Ganassi, not just in NASCAR in general, but we're talking about Sunday afternoons. We believe that Ross Chastain will give our team the opportunity to be competitive each week and our sponsors someone can build a program around. Additionally, his racing background has him well suited to make the move to the Cup Series. The 42 team would feature a complete retooling for the 2021 season. They could have retained the total Chad. Chad Johnston was a seven-time NASCAR Cup Series winner, had a playbook that featured how to coach inexperienced, unproven drivers and get the most out of them. Kyle Larson was nothing but potential in the Chris Hero years. You'd always hear from NASCAR fans, when is he going to win? When is he going to win? You have Jeff Gordon over here saying Kyle Larson is the future, but when is that future going to become reality? Chad Johnston was the guy that matured him to where he finally got that first career Cup Series win midway through his third season at Michigan. 
Phil Surgeon, one of the engineers on the team, on that August afternoon would become the crew chief instead for Ross Chastain. Entering the 2021 season, Ross Chastain knew he would have to step things up. I know I have my work cut out for me, but I'm ready to work and help bring more success to the organization. Finally, NASCAR fans would be able to answer the half-decade-long question. Was Ross Chastain really that good, or was he just trying too hard? Blinded from the realities of racing for organizations like Premium Motorsports that had no ambitions of even being remotely competitive. The Clover sponsor driver ironically started out the season pretty lucky, finishing 7th without a scratch on his Chevrolet Camaro. Ryan Blaney had other ideas at the Daytona Road Course. A crossover gone wrong saw Chastain sandwich the outside wall that tore up the suspension beyond repair. He had to DNF out of the race, finishing well down the running order. That would seem to be the theme in the early going for Ross Chastain, either living by the sword or dying by the sword. At Phoenix, as Kyle Busch checked up a bit, Ross Chastain, he held it wide open. Turned the two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion to make his bad day even worse. KFB was none too pleased with the Melon Man. So I was about ready to wreck the 42 anyways. Sure glad he got me first. During the inaugural Bristol Dirt Race, Christopher Bell tried to get everything out of his Toyota Camry in Stage 1 of the race. Wrong place, wrong time for Ross Chastain. After 13 NASCAR Cup Series races, Ross Chastain found himself 23rd in the season point standings. Chip Ganassi Racing just did not have the speed. They lacked it compared to their Chevrolet counterparts in Henrik Motorsports. Both of their drivers, Kurt Busch included, were below the threshold to be playoff eligible. For a team behind the curve, the clean slate inaugural Circuit of the Americas race was just what they needed to kind of have the entire competition on the same page. Ross Chastain on that afternoon fought tooth and nail for every single spot, even if that meant running a teammate up the racetrack. Getting some extremely unique praise from Mike Joy, who ended up picking Ross Chastain to win the race in the Credit One Bank ones to watch. I'm having a lot of fun watching Ross Chastain today. He is driving with abandon. Fourth place in the rain short and affair started a new positive trend for car number 42. The Chip Ganassi program had a strong road course program based on their performance at Coda and based on Ross Chastain's seventh place runs at Sonoma and Road America. And Road America was a really good race for Ross Chastain. He had a stellar car on the long run along with teammate Kurt Busch, who were both at the end of the race, the two fastest cars on the entire course as Chase Elliott cruised his way to his second win of the year. If there would have been another green-white checkered, you never know, Ross Chastain could have stolen a victory on that 4th of July weekend. CGR was making strides as an organization, not only on the road courses, not only with the left and right turns, but strictly the left turns, mainly intermediates. Ross Chastain, he finished second at Nashville due to the pitch strategy, eighth at Loudoun. Then he would pull a Cal Naughton. Unfortunately, the midsummer momentum for Ross Chastain wasn't enough to trump that spring storm. Without a win, Ross Chastain missed the 2021 postseason. And it's too bad he didn't because Ross Chastain had a really good long run car at the Southern 500. Poised to defeat playoff drivers, Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. by using the two stop strategy before Ryan Blaney ultimately lost his brakes, looped it around, and caused a caution. Settling instead for a third place finish and chilling out watching Kyle Larson completely ride the wall like a video game to try to catch Denny Hamlin. Richmond the next week, Ross Chastain tried the opposite strategy and got the same result, this time finishing in 7th place. His final top 10 on the year, which would give him 8 top 10s as well as 3 top 5s in his quote unquote rookie season. Unfortunately for Ross Chastain, he was also one of the most accident prone drivers in the entire series involved in the fourth most incidents of all full-time drivers. Ross Chastain's 2021 season felt more like a trailer than an actual full-length feature film. It's like we got a lot of good glimpses at what Ross Chastain could be as a driver, what he could do in this series, but just not enough to really anticipate what type of driver Ross Chastain could be in extended circumstances. 2022 was shaping up to be the year where we would find out what type of driver Ross Chastain is in a full-length way. Now that's of course assuming that he even has a ride for the next season. Chip Ganassi would sell his two-car operation to Pitbull, the rapper that is plotting the complete takeover of the NASCAR garage based on his nickname and how he opens this with every single song of his. It's Mr. Worldwide. 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 
Trackhouse Racing would run two full-time cars in 2022. The 99 for Daniel Suarez and crew chief Travis Mack. Easy choice to retain the young, competitive driver that believed in the team, and he obviously also brings a lot to the table as the 2016 Xfinity Series champion. However, Justin Marks had many, many sleepless nights tossing, turning, debating as to who would be the best fit to drive car number one. The conservative choice, the driver with a resume full of accomplishments in the 2004 NASCAR Cup Series champion Kurt Busch, or the chaotic choice which would be a winless Ross Chastain that didn't really have the experience of Kurt Busch, however his entire career was out his front windshield, he could see potential success in Ross Chastain. Justin Marks would end up making his choice, he would choose the work ethic and the blue collar personality of Ross Chastain. Ross is a young, aggressive driver that we believe has the talent to win races at the Cup Series level. Everyone believed in Ross Chastain, whether it was Justin Marks, Pitbull, or his race team. Everyone except one major player that keeps this motorsport going round, and that is obviously corporate America. Monster Energy left to continue their nine-year partnership with Kurt Busch. McDonald's ended up doubling down on their partnership with 2311 Racing. Gear Wrench went from one champion to another in Kevin Harvick. Clover, the primary sponsor for Ross Chastain in 2021, left NASCAR altogether. Even a track house who had Camping World, the Lamonis bonus would not be a thing for that season. Although this was a blessing in disguise because good Sam, he was a malignant tumor to this race team. I guess at least Trackhouse gained Advent Health considering all the stressors that comes with putting together the financial side of racing. This would be the quote unquote anchor sponsor for all of 8 races for Ross Chastain, alongside another returning sponsor which would be Moose Fraternity for 4 races, sponsoring Spring Talladega, Gateway, Summer Richmond, and Fall Martinsville. I want you to remember these races because there would be many Moose moments in this 2022 season. So as you can see, Trackhouse had 99 problems, but Ross Chastain wouldn't be one. The Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas is comparable to a dipstick. Usually, it's a testament to just how strong you are as a race team. Dating back to 2017, the driver that dominated and or won the race was typically one that made a strong run at the championship later on in the season. When you look back at this race, it was one of the early defining races of Ross Chastain's 2022 season. 83 laps led would be a new career high. Now unfortunately, Phil Surgeon, he could not outsmart the Hendrick team on strategy, but to finish third, to run up there with Joe Gibbs Racing and Hendrick, it showed early on in this going that Trackhouse Racing was going to be a major player in this next generation era. Phoenix the next weekend enforced this thinking even more because here Ross Chastain was fighting for win number one alongside Tyler Reddick and Chase Briscoe with those same aspirations. Then you had Atlanta. Chastain was entertaining the fans before he would blow a tire right in front of the field. Fortunately, there would be no major damage. He would get a second life, leading Ross Chastain. Of all drivers in this field, Ross Chastain would be the one that would lead a conservative race in the second half to finish second in the race. Guys, that's when you know when you've truly brought a crap racing tire to the racetrack. More on that some other time. Atlanta would give him a second straight second place finish, which would put him on a streak of finishing third, second, and second over the past three weeks. Race number six at Circuit of the Americas being the next race seemed like destiny for Ross Chastain. Chip Ganassi Racing's road course program was strong in 2021, and Trackhouse Racing would not just pick up where they left off, they would fly. Daniel Suarez dominated the first stage before he would be derailed by a series of unfortunate events. Ross Chastain answered the call to action, leading 18 laps on his own before getting into a tough jockey between he, AJ Allmendinger, and Alex Bowman. On the final lap, the Action 16 used up Chastain, but as a watermelon farmer, a profession that requires you to work with your hands, Ross Chastain would not let the prestige of being a two-time Cup Series road course ace stop him from doing what was necessary to get the job done. Oh! He is! Oh! And around goes all the way. Ross Chastain could now do his iconic watermelon smash in the NASCAR Cup Series. The winning wouldn't stop there, though. Talladega the next month just kind of fell into his lap. Eric Jones, he tried to block Kyle Larson, parted the seas for the first official moose moment of the 2022 season, but certainly not the last. 
Trackhouse Racing did something in that first half of the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season that fans were not expecting. After years of domination from Hendrick, JGR, and Penske, here it was, this brand new organization in their second season with Ross Chastain winning races and looking like championship favorites. Because of that, in the office at Trackhouse, Justin Marks was starting to hear the phone ring a lot more. Major corporations, they started to pay attention and say, hey, this organization, particularly that Ross Chastain guy, he is going to get his decent television exposure to millions of people across the United States. On April 23rd, Worldwide Express would strike a two-year deal to sponsor Trackhouse for 21 races annually, including Ross Chastain for 17, becoming the official primary sponsor. Their first official race would be the All-Star Race, and I'm telling you, Worldwide Express, they would get their money's worth in that first race. <laughs> Sponsoring Ross Chastain in the NASCAR Cup Series was a valuable investment. His winning not only generated him attention, but also his altercations. They generated a lot of impressions for his sponsors. Meanwhile, Ross Chastain himself, with his actions on the racetrack, his aggressive nature, it would influence the NASCAR Cup Series season. Martin Truex Jr. would have made the NASCAR postseason if not for Ross Chastain's aggressive move on the final lap. He went up the racetrack to block Martin Truex Jr.'s momentum, causing him to spin out of the race, and this costed him eight positions on the racetrack. Later on in that season, Ryan Blaney would make the postseason over Martin Truex Jr. by just three points. Worldwide Technology Raceway, meanwhile, was destined to be a big race for Ross Chastain with another moose moment. In fact, yours truly, guys, predicted Ross Chastain to have racing redemption at his hands. The wheel still and perfect as the winner of the inaugural Enjoy Illinois 300. His wheel would not remain straight or perfect based on his driving that afternoon. This has been all over the back of Denny, and he finally just runs into him. He definitely moved him. Ooh. Dumbass! None shall pass. What? None shall pass. On that day, Ross Chastain put himself in the conversation for the Nobel Peace Prize by uniting Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott fans against him. The front page of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, if NASCAR even made the front page, probably reading something like, Melon Man drives with his melon in the glove box. And I remember joining the mob of fans flocking towards the exits after the dust settled, still listening to the MRN scanner when they got to Ross Chastain. He sincerely believed he didn't deserve to even drive for Justin Marks and Trackhouse. Ross Chastain did the right thing by owning up to his mistakes, although I think doing this after the race would have also been it. At Atlanta, Denny Hamlin would run Ross Chastain and Alex Bowman up the track, almost settling two scores with one move. That move right there was considered strong and empowering. Ross Chastain in that same race clipped Denny Hamlin and NBC would go on another Melon Man bad tirade. He's gonna have to clean these things up. It just, he's a professional race car driver, he's a winner. He's a championship contender. You just can't continue to be, do these types of things. More incidents at Pocono and Richmond, another oh. moose moment, question whether Ross Chastain was legit. Could he really perform at a top level without running into guys? This season for Ross Chastain was already a feature film, but the NASCAR playoffs would really determine what type of movie that was and what type of character behind the wheel Ross Chastain really was. In the round of 16 and in the round of 12, Chastain would overcome mechanical issues to advance, setting him up for a contested three-race season to transfer into the Duel in the Desert Championship for a fight for the NASCAR Cup Series Championship. If only the Las Vegas race were a few laps shorter, because Ross Chastain, he would have gained that advantage, Joey Logano did, by having three weeks to prep for the championship. Instead, the four-tire strategy from Paul Wolf had enough time to pay off, passing Ross Chastain and handing him a runner-up finish to open up the round of eight. Meanwhile, Homestead was another solid points day to keep him ahead of the playoff cut line. The Xfinity 500 at Martinsville was destined to be a career-defining race for Ross Chastain. Denny Hamlin on that afternoon would maximize on his stage points. Christopher Bell coming in clutch meant that the two rivals with rivaling postal companies would be battling each other for the final transfer spot into the big race. Brandon McReynolds, spotter for the number one team, reminded Ross Chastain of his situation with just one lap remaining. Two spots here. Gotta get him. Yeah, I gotta get him beat too. But with Ross Chastain not in car lanes distance of any other car, Denny Hamlin's season was set to survive. Ross Chastain's was set to end in the round of eight. 
Hey, it was a good season for the melon man. I'm sure after this season, his fellow farmers, they would dazzle at the idea that one of their own won two cup races and was just a few points away from the winner take all race. For blue collar Ross Chastain, you never know when an opportunity like this will come about, even if ever. Just look at farming. One morning when the rooster crows, you're ready to harvest all your crops by sundown. Then all of a sudden, one of those random Florida pop-up showers in the afternoon forces you to crumple up that plant and throw it in the bin. Ross Chastain put his entire reputation as a driver and potentially even his life on the line, trying something that had never been attempted in NASCAR's entire 74-year history. Holy hell. My God, coming to the checkered flag. I can't believe what I just saw. Holy sh**. Unbelievable. Wow. What's the one outside over here? Outside, 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 outside. Talk to me, boys. You made the transfer. You made the transfer, man. The most surprising thing about Ross Chastain's hail melon isn't the fact that it worked, but rather the fact that Ross Chastain even had the awareness to make that move in the first place. Ross Chastain's time playing chase for the cup with his brother Chad in Alva, Florida not only allowed him to shatter the Martinsville track record, but it landed him a spot in NASCAR's championship race. Also, the fact that Brad Keselowski got disqualified, that move of the century right there saved NASCAR from having to tell their fans Denny Hamlin is out, Ross Chastain would be in, all because a non-playoff driver failed inspection. All the talk entering Phoenix instead was about Ross Chastain's Hail Melon, the millions of views on social media that put NASCAR and Ross Chastain in the mainstream. Based on that momentum, Ross Chastain, he was the championship favorite. Now as for the race, it turns out that four tire strategy call to get Joey Logano to pass Ross Chastain to win that race would come back to bite the Melon Man once again in the biggest race of the season. If the NASCAR Championship or the NASCAR Playoffs awarded a MVP award like other professional sports leagues, that honor would easily go to Paul Wolf. He entered the championship not just prepared, but with a game plan to achieve his goal of domination. NASCAR and NBC really tried hard to hype up the Hail Melon, with Ross Chastain closing in. Millions of fans, mainly people over 50, glued their eyeballs to the Turn 3 wall, anticipating Ross Chastain to send it in again, this time to steal the championship from Joey Logano. That would never happen. Ross Chastain didn't believe he could pull it off. Five years ago, Ross Chastain was racing for teams that were just wishing to finish single-digit laps down. To conclude his second full-time season on November 6, 2022, he would finish third place and finish second in the season standings. From top to bottom, Ross Chastain improved his numbers from 2021 to 2022. Trackhouse Racing built on the momentum from Chip Ganassi Racing, and the next generation car meant less disadvantages compared to Hendrick and JGR, meaning that Ross Chastain could show his driver talent in a bigger scale. Even as he was once again incident prone, Ross Chastain was involved in the fourth most incidents among all active NASCAR Cup Series drivers. The leader, believe it or not, was Kyle Busch. That's just me. When we look back at Ross Chastain's first two seasons in the NASCAR Cup Series in competitive equipment, we're going to see 2021 as that trailer to 2022 where Ross Chastain would end up performing straight out of a movie. Ross Chastain in 2022 was compared to Lightning McQueen in Cars, breaking out the season as an unknown watermelon farmer, but by the end of the season, everyone would know his name. And considering the fact that Ross Chastain, like Lightning McQueen, pulled a lot of aggressive moves and had that one spectacular moment, Ross Chastain's 2021 to 2022 180 in performance was straight out of a movie. So anyways, this is Nathan for NRF Productions signing out and just remember guys and gals, life's a beach and then you drive.